Hey guys, today I'm going over CAM in SOLIDWORKS using HSMWORKS. So, what is CAM? Uh, CAM is computer aided manufacturing and it is used for the CNC machine. It's important for designers to know because if we want to make any sheet metal parts or just in general any parts that are cut out with sheets, you know, of plastic, it doesn't really uh, matter about the material. Uh, main thing is it uses the CNC and we need CAM so the CNC can run uh, with code and cut our piece out. And we use we use HSMWorks. Uh, SolidWorks does have built-in CAM, but on our team we use HSMWorks. How to get HSMWorks? So you need to go to Autodesk.com, so the Autodesk Autodesk website, and you need to create an account and request for an educational license. Uh, once you get your educational license, you need to download HSMWorks Ultimate, and it should look like the picture I have on the screen. And once you have that, you can launch SolidWorks. And you need when you're when you have your part made, you need to make sure you select the right tabs. So the main tabs are uh, the CAM Operations tab, which is the bottom right um, picture, and the CAM uh, toolbar, the yep, on the top picture. And in order to get to the CAM Operations tab, you you can press the arrows, uh, which is shown in the bottom, bottom left picture. So first thing, you need to create a job, and this is uh, just a folder for uh, the for you to store all the operations in. And you're going to change the setting for the job from the original default to uh, which is top center. You want to change it to top corner one. So it should make it so that the origin is located at the top surface of the bottom left corner of your piece. Setting up the setting up the tool. So whenever you uh, create a new operation or a feature kind of in the feature tree, you're going to be asked for a tool, or at least the first time you do, you'll be asked for a tool, and then all the rest of the times you'll reference what tool you uh, selected before. But when you're asked for this, you need to select a tool, and uh, on our team, it's either a 1 8 drill bit, a 1 8 inch drill bit, or a 3 millimeter drill bit. And in order to get that, you need to create a library for FRC and add new mil, new mill tool. So when you create a library, you get into the menu, and you go into you can go into my libraries, create a new library, name it FRC or something, and then you'll uh, select new mill tool, and then uh, you'll make the you put in the settings for one eighth drill bits and three millimeter drill bits, and the document for what settings you need will be linked at the end of this uh, presentation. So. First type of feature, bores. So bores are used for screw holes, so the small type of holes. Uh, of course, those holes cannot be smaller than your drill bit, which is 1 8 inch. Uh, you need to select all your screw holes when you're doing this. And bores should always be at the top of the feature tree underneath your job. So it's the first thing that the CNC wants to uh, operate uh, or do, uh, carry out. Uh, so this is just showing an example. You want to select all the interfaces of the screw holes. And this is all done in one bore, and it will do all of the holes. And the specific settings for the bore, pause the video, stay here on the slide. Uh, make sure when you're doing the bore, you look at the tabs inside the bore feature, and you get all of the uh, red boxed features uh, to what they are shown on the screen. This uh, That is important, as you can see. And pockets. So pockets are for holes that are larger than screw holes, but they're not too large. So they're smaller than bearing holes. Uh, so select all the holes that you want pocketed. And pockets should be right below bores on the feature tree. So in this presentation, I'm going in order of what you should be doing in your cam uh, while you're doing cam. So you want to always select the bottom edge of the holes, not the top edge, always the bottom. Make sure the arrows are in the area that is cut out and not inside the actual piece because that is the side your drill bit will be on. So when you select the edge, the drill bit will be on one side cutting and the arrow is what side it is on. And if your arrow is inside the piece, uh, select the edge that it, the arrow is on and then click reverse as shown in the image and it will uh, move the arrow to the other side. And specific settings for pocketing. So not going to go all over all of it. Just pause the video, stay in the slide, and uh, uh, do all the settings in SolidWorks. So all the red boxes. 
the inner contours. So uh, this uses the contour, uh, the 2D contour feature, and contours are used for bearing holes and other larger areas that need to be cut out. So it's like pocketing. It, it's what every uh, pocketing isn't done for. So bearing holes or larger use inner contour, uh, the contour feature. And I'm calling this an inner contour because there's we're going to use the contour tool again later. So inner contours are areas that cut out within the piece itself. So not the actual piece, the whole piece, but like the small, the holes and everything inside the piece. And inner contours should be right below any pockets you may have in the feature tree. So oftentimes you won't have pockets just because you don't have holes that are bigger than screw holes or smaller than bearing holes. Generally you have screw holes and bearing holes usually. Uh, so this is just uh, same thing as pocketing. You want to select the bottom edge of the holes. Make sure the errors are in the area that is not cut out and not inside the actual piece. Click reverse if the arrow is inside the actual piece. Same thing as pocketing. Uh, and then there are slightly less specific settings that you need for this. Make sure you adjust these and do the contour feature. The outer contour. Uh, it's, the, it's the same tool, the 2D contour, but the outer contour is what will actually cut the piece out. So it's the last cut you want to do on the CNC, which is why the outer contour is always the last, feed, uh, last one in the feature tree. And this is basically where you select the outer edge. So you'll see here. Uh, it's not too clear in the image, but same thing. Select the bottom edge of your outside piece. Make sure the arrow is in the area that is cut out and not inside the actual piece. Click reverse if it's inside the actual piece and specific, set, specific settings for outer contours. And the feature tree. So your feature tree should look like this after you finish. Uh, there should only be one type of, uh, one, one of each type of cut you use. So you should only have one bore feature, one pocket feature if you have any pocket features, one and then one inner contour and one outer contour. And the inner contour is the one will be put above the outer contour. Uh, in the feature tree, and once you're done, have the CNC have a CNC lead check over your cam. So simulating is a good way to check uh, to make sure your tool path is correct. You just select job and then uh, click on simulate. So if you select any of the uh, individual features such as bore or the pockets with the contours, if you select that and click simulate, it'll only do whatever feature you selected. If you select the whole job, it'll do the whole thing, basically what the CNC will be doing in uh, real time, or real life. And then posting your process. So this is what converts your cam into code that the CNC will use. Uh, in setup, you want to select use installed post library. So uh, it might not have that selected in the beginning when you, just, uh, when you begin cam. Uh, you want to select use installed post library. And then you want to select your output folder. So this is where your cam or your CNC code is going to be saved. So you can find it later on when you need to give it to manufacturing. And for the program name or number, uh, you want to just put in a number for now and then click on post. And then once it'll pop up with the save folder, change the file name to what you want it instead of the number you had before. And then save your file and give it to someone who runs the CNC. And that's it. And these are specific settings, so your, the specific settings for the bit uh, tool bits or drill bit and the tools. And there's also a demonstration video link where I go over all the stuff basically I've gone through in this uh, video here.